Today on Houston Life, it's National Fudge Day. We're celebrating with a local business owner who made a sweet switch from law to chocolate. And in honor of Pride Month, we've got delicious craft, wine, and beer that help support the LGBTQ plus community. Plus, June is Men's Health Month. We're going to have details on the latest breakthrough treatment that promises to help men feel more confident. And we will find out who is the better designer when Lauren and Joe go head to head to try to create a beautiful living space. They look very comfortable. Uh-oh, uh -oh. no kids, come on, <laughs> settle down. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life. We are halfway through the week, Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. You know what I say? We're just, what is today's Wednesday? So tomorrow's Friday Eve. Then there's Friday. So we're, it's basically Friday, right? Yeah, okay. We're there. And Tex is with us today as well. I know, this sweet Tex. I love his little blowout, though. Isn't he cute? He's looking good. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, crazy weather yesterday, although, depending on where you live, Maybe you got nothing. Some people didn't get rain at all. At our house, it was, oh dear, that's your backyard? This is my backyard, and it was hailing. Oh, uh, wow. Crazy pants, right? It just came out of nowhere, yeah. It I really did. I mean, the house was super dark, and then all of a sudden cracks of, you know, thunder and lightning, and next thing you know, it was hailing. Oh my goodness. See, at our house, it, there no hail fell out of the sky, but the lightning, you know, we can see downtown, so we can see all of the cranes getting hit by lightning. I love thunderstorms in Texas, as long as you're not outside, you yes, know. Yes, and looking know. out at one, absolutely. Producer Erin, she was saying one time, uh, you know, this is so crazy about our weather. I don't think this was yesterday's storm, but you know, it was pouring in her backyard, and oh, it was yesterday, pouring in her backyard and nothing in the front. Love when that happens here in Texas. What? I know. It's happened to me before. How is that possible? I don't know. Well, you know, Such once a while... palatial mansion. <laughs> you see, it's blocks long. She lives in a really <laughs> huge house. It's bigger than NRG Center, just to give you an idea. Um, you, you know those walls of water, though? Like, I had never seen this until I moved to Houston. You're driving along the road, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you see this wall of rain coming at you. It's so crazy. And it's terrifying because it's, I think Justin Stapleton uh, was saying, this morning on TV, it's like this blinding yes. rain. I think Tex needs to go to the potty. He's, he's looking fine. for an escape room. Yeah, okay, he's, we're going to let him go. Thanks, Kat. Thank you, Kat. Um, Bye, Tex Max. It is Good just crazy you. weather, but I'm glad it cleared just in time for us to head down to Minute Maid Park. Can you believe the last time I w went to go see an Astros game with my very own eyes was May 2019? Oh, I can believe that. The ticket so, was still in my purse. How did it feel to be back? It was so amazing. We had such a great time. It was so awesome. Aww. And that's Connor, of course. Okay, he and looks like a teenager. I know. There's AJ. So grown up. We had so much fun. And we met some new friends. Of course, if you watch the game and you follow, you know, we went into extra innings. And it was crazy. Bases loaded. Altuve hits a grand slam walk-off in the bottom of the 10th. Amazing. That's RJ in the blue, Brandon in the white. His mom, Roberta, sent me a message on Instagram this morning and said, hey, by chance, were you sitting uh, along the first oh baseline? Oh gosh, that's you on the television. I, I know. You finally made it on television. I made it on TV. But hang on, y'all. Don't even get it because I thought, thank you. Thankfully, that was the shot they took because I had a hot dog and nachos. I'm glad I wasn't stuffing my face. Why? What's I, wrong with that? Well, you know, I mean, keeping it classy. You know, I love, I love, it was Dollar Dog Night. Somebody on the Jumbotron had the Dollar Dog Night shirt on. Where did you get it? I need it. But it was so much fun. RJ and Brandon, they had, we had so much fun with you guys, and they were so great to the boys. Hugs, cheering. I mean, it was an incredible game. It also, there's nothing like going out to a baseball game and just being there oh. in the stands. It's one of my favorite sports to watch. We go to the games and we love it, and it's a great tradition. So I'm glad you went back out. It was so great. And tons of people say, I love you guys. I love you and Derek watch all the time, including viewer Anne. Anne, I met your husband last night. As we were walking in, he was walking in with a friend. We took a picture, but it's on his phone, and I can't remember his name, but Anne, thanks for watching, and Derek, 
They told me to tell you that they watch every single day. Oh, that's so nice. And sweet Christina Wells was there. She sang the national anthem yesterday. We ran into each other. Oh, I mean, it was a amazing. it was a game. So talented. So talented. Good. Well, I'm glad you went back. It was so much fun. Great game to be there. Oh my gosh, this morning I was just sort of scrolling through my Twitter feed. Did y'all hear about this uh, little league championship game that went all wrong? Nobody quite knows the details leading up to the events of adults behaving badly. Essentially, these parents uh, started screaming, obscenities, profanities, mm -hmm. and fighting. Police are looking into the incident. We cannot actually show you the video because we don't own it, but if you look it up online, it is just a stunning display of... It happens more often than something. you think. Does it? Yes. Parents, like, fighting yes. and cussing each other out? And yelling at the little boys playing on the field. But making it's... fun of their last names. Uh, yes, it happens all what? the time. Yes, it happens all the time. Do you know how many hours I spent sitting in a baseball park? Yes, it happens all the time. Why would an adult make fun of a child's name? Or, I like, guess harass because they were losing. From... I mean, I can't figure it out. It's horrible. And the poor umpires, you know, they don't make a lot of money. These are not, uh, you know, these are little league They're umpires. They're like volunteering and... their time, essentially. And they are ridiculed from start to finish it's it's embarrassing several times embarrassing but okay so that kind of behavior doesn't that mean that the parents can be ejected like the child is dismissed sadly like that is the usually it's the parent a... that gets kicked out and i've been for, i've been around for that it takes a lot for that to happen um of course if it's a physical altercation you know then yes but the the chatter you know from the stands it takes a lot for that to happen but i have been a witness of many parents being kicked off walked off a field the weird irony in situations like that though is i feel like young people are taught good sportsmanship, right? We're, we're taught as young people, right, in schools that when you have a disagreement with someone, you talk it out, you yes. work it out. Good sportsmanship is, you know, the name of the game, right? I don't think there's ever a place for it. We have a lot of friends who play softball down at the Houston Sportsplex. Love so it. on Sunday mornings, we go down there. Somehow at 10 a.m., we've got a large pitcher of beer. It just happens, you know. It's a good time. But there's always good sportsmanship, and there's such a good feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, there can be such a good feeling in sports and how quickly it can change when people choose to behave in such I think in, in, in that respect, too, the parents need to understand that their children are watching yeah. and other children are watching. So it, it's really heartbreaking oh, when I'd you see that mortified. scenario. Yeah. I'd be mortified if my mom behaved that way. It's, anyway, look up the video or don't. It, but it's really sad. There are still good people in the world, though. And there's some good news in the sports world yeah. today. Friends of the show, of course, Carlos Correa and Daniela Correa. Congratulations, the couple just announced moments ago they are expecting. This is awesome. I know, congratulations, what a gorgeous couple. Philanthropy, I mean, everything they do in this backyard and of course for Puerto Rico as well, but they love Houston. We love you guys and congratulations on the baby news. Big congratulations, speaking of good people and good karma. They have done so much to help this community too that I think it's so great that we can all celebrate their baby news. And great home run last night, Carl. Carlos, you kind of got the rally going last night. It was awesome. Okay, so moving on. This is really, we love talking about these statistics and things that are gathered. So we have a list of 2021's most fun states in America. Ooh, okay. Any guesses? Where Texas falls? Yeah. I think we think? were, I would bet we are close to the top of the list. Are we uh, the top? No, we're not the top. We're number eight. We oh. fall number eight. California, California oh, wow. A is number one, followed by Florida. You see Nevada, New York, Illinois, Colorado, and then um, Washington, Texas, Minnesota, and Pennsylvania. But what makes them the most fun? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> um, factors that were considered include um, movie costs, movie, going to the movies, accessibility to national parks. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Um, to casinos per capita. Casinos rank real high when you're looking at fun things to do. I mean, fun comes in a lot of ways. Ways in a lot of different Shapes. forms. <laughs> okay, but I would say we're super fun. Also, I mean, Austin is a short drive away. Yeah. Dallas is a short drive. Galveston. We have a lot of road trips. But right here in Houston, I think 
Houston is often overlooked. It's always overlooked. Because even people who have traveled through to Houston, it's such a big city, it's so spread out. It takes a while to sort of learn your way around and get a sense of the city. We have so much to offer down here. I was working on a story down near Space Center Houston recently, and I drove by and saw the shuttle outside, and just the things that you can see and do, the things we have access to in this city, I think we are underrated. A hundred percent. What's so funny about th you're saying that, I have some friends coming in from Chicago this weekend because White Sox are playing the Astros this weekend. So they were saying, what, what should we do? What should we do? What places to go? And I said, hey, listen, this is not a walking city, but literally pages of things and places to go, what I ended up sending. Awesome. So, I mean, there is there are tons of things to do. Maybe you should send me that too. I know, because right? I saved it for myself. Did you? Yes, because I once I started typing, I couldn't stop. Anytime someone asks me though for uh, recommendations, go I go blank. Me too. Especially if they're saying like, okay, we're coming in town, which restaurant should we go to? I immediately blank it. Me it too. takes me a minute. I think it's paralysis because there's so many to choose from. If I actually sit down and make a list, the list is endless. One of I the know. best food cities in the world. Oh, it's so good. I'm so hungry now, too. Yeah, well, Ghostros, have fun uh, with your friends this weekend from Chicago. That's fun to have house guests in town. All right. Well, oh, I didn't say they were staying with me. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys have fun. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Plenty of great hotels next Lots to those of restaurants. Great lodging here. All right. Still to come on Houston Life. Are you in search of the perfect manicure? Don't Always. look closely at my nails. You don't need time or talent. There is now a robot. Courtney, you have to see this to believe it. It is so good. Oh, I hope it's here. So right good. now, let's check in with Lauren and Joe, who are getting ready for a throwdown type competition today. Y'all, keep it clean. <laughs> Well, we're going to try Courtney and right. Derek, but we are here at this gorgeous exclusive furniture store right here in Cyprus, and we're going to take all of this beautiful furniture and put it to the test, right, Joe? That's right. We're going to be talking about their 23rd anniversary, the sales they're going to be having this weekend, and Lauren, I hope you're ready to go down. Oh, no, 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 no. Future Life is back in just a few minutes. <laughs> All right, so manicures, they come around very often, right? Doesn't it feel like you always need to get your nails done? Yes. Okay. Even so right now. I just clip my own nails. I mean, I'm not a manicure guy, but a lot of guys get them, yeah. and many women do. So on average, if you had to guess how many hours the average woman spends on her nails every year, what would you say? Oh, boy. So I go about every two weeks, about, you know, I mean, 100? 100 hours? Yeah. So uh, it's actually... 3,000 minutes a year, which is 50 hours. 50 hours, which averages out. You know, it's a lot of time sitting there. Yes, What if is. I told you there is a robot that can do the entire job in less than 10 minutes? Bring it. Okay, I think we have video to show. Now, here's the good news. It's 10 minutes. It is super accurate. This machine does such a great job. This is from a company called Clockwork, and there is no slip-up, no slowdown, no small talk, right? The bad news is it's in San Francisco only at the moment. $7.99, Courtney. For a manicure? Yes. $7.99. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, because it's a robot that focuses on painting your nails, in terms of, like, the clipping and the trimming and all of those things, your nails have to be ready to paint. Okay. But the paint job, for 8 bucks, it sounds like a deal to me. I would do it. Right? Would you try it out? I would definitely try it out. So Absolutely. I think we need to figure out a way to get this thing to Houston. Give it a Either whirl. Either that or we go to San Francisco for a business trip. What business would we have in San We're Francisco? doing research for our viewers. Who's going to pay for that? Work. It's a business trip. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Kat, can you look into that for us, please? Set that up for can us. Can we just go to San Francisco <laughs> to get our nails done? Fire up the jet. How about this? If the company will pay for our trip out there, I will pay for the manicure. How oh, that? that's a deal. <laughs> Seven ninety. We got a big budge here, so you know, you never know. Pretty okay, good, though. We, I love it. We want to hear from you. What's one thing you wish you had a robot that could take care of it for you? You can visit our Houston Life Facebook page to let us know. I have a list. I only have to choose one. Yeah, uh, what would yours be? Uh, laundry. Folding laundry. Folding laundry. Absolutely. Me too. I don't mind putting it in. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why is it that I don't mind putting it in? Because that's the easy part. You oh. put it in and you hit the button. And I feel like I'm doing something and I walk away and I'm like, oh gosh, now what do I have to do? I gotta move it over and fold it? Folding laundry is the worst. And I gotta tell you, we have some really awful, ugly clothes in our house because we just moved and nothing Nothing makes you reevaluate your life choices than a move. Like, why did I buy this? What? Why did I keep this? <laughs> why did I wear this a few times? Yeah. Textile recycling, here we come. All right, here it is. Okay, have you been looking to spruce up your home with some new furniture? Always, Get rid right? Of all the old. Okay, today we sent Lauren and Joe out to exclusive furniture so they could put their design skills to the test. So, Lauren and Joe, tell us what you're up to. How is this all going to work? So this is how it's going to work, Derek and Courtney. Laura and I, were ready to put our creative skills to the test. We have these two rooms right here, as you can see, are completely empty. So we're going to be going through this entire floor space, checking out some of the items that they have here, and we're going to throw in some of our own creative tips and try and figure out who has the best room. We're going to have people compete on Facebook, Lauren. <laughs> oh, it's no. going to be a poll that we're going to have on social media with people telling us if we got the best room. Who has the best room? Which is probably going to be me. It, it probably <laughs> will be because, you know, when it comes to testing, I'm just like the worst person ever. But I do want to tell you guys, Exclusive Furniture is the place to come and shop this weekend. They're celebrating 23 years as an anniversary. They've got a Father's Day sale happening, 25% off. And the best mm. part about this, Joe, it's going to be free delivery, and they're going to set it up for you, exactly. too. So the best part, you don't want to set your own furniture up, right? If we don't want to do that because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work that goes into it, also a lot of the work that goes into it is making sure we choose the best pieces and here there's going to be designers that work with you there's on staff that knows a lot about the furniture pieces to make sure that your space looks very very beautiful for this upcoming summer so we're going to have those tips given to us and we're going to have professional advice when we get our design throw down absolutely and also if they weren't aware our viewers might not know this but there is a furniture shortage right now after mm -hmm. the pandemic everything you see here at this store at exclusive furniture is going to be in stock and ready to come at the same weekend so it's going to be a great time to come in and get your furniture maybe dad wants a recliner for father's yeah. day oh, maybe i want a recliner we for both father's want a recliner day. we all want to relax <laughs> for this summer absolutely so we're going to talk much more about their upcoming fourth of july specials and lots more and like you said, Joe and I are going to throw down these empty spaces behind us. We're going to pick out our items and make it our own. Joe, good luck to you. Good luck to you because you're going to need it, Lauren. I'm a trash talker, Courtney and Derek, so we're going to be doing that all throughout the show. Uh-oh, listen, we root for the underdog. But listen, this is so cool. You both have a blank canvas. Right. Can't wait to see what you create. All right, we'll see yes, you in just a bit. Great, guys. It's time to get it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good luck. When we come back, June is Men's Health Month, and we are learning more about a non-invasive procedure helping men feel stronger and more confident. And later, we're serving up some tasty libations that are giving back in honor of Pride Month. Look at that boat. That bottle is so pretty. Beautiful. Stay right there. Houston Life will be right back. June is Men's Health Month, and for many, our next topic might be uncomfortable to talk about, but our next guest says it doesn't have to be. Andrew Reinhardt with Silverleaf Medical Clinic spoke with Joe Sam about a treatment option to help treat ED. We're feeling good and we're ready to dive into this topic here because we already know that the Silverleaf Medical Clinic offers some great treatments for everyone and that you're one of the only clinics to offer patients the latest breakthrough in ED treatment. So what makes your treatment different? Well, at Silverleaf Medical Clinic, we're treating ED with acoustic wave therapy. Now, this is a technology that basically uses gentle pressure waves that open up and regrow blood vessels. Erectile dysfunction is a blood flow problem. Here's the main difference. Pills and injections, those treat the symptoms of ED and unfortunately cause a lot of side effects. Our treatments go to the root cause. They improve blood flow so that we can get rid of the ED and get the spontaneity back into the relationship. Absolutely. Now, we already know there's a lot of hesitation about this here. What would you tell someone who's been avoiding getting treatment? Naturally, men are a little bit skeptical and embarrassed. Here's what I would say. The average guy does a few treatments. They're 10 minutes over two to three weeks. Think about how easy that is to get the intimacy back, get rid of the erectile dysfunction, 
We can do anything for two or three weeks, especially when it means getting rid of those pills for good. Andrew, we definitely want to get rid of those pills. Now, when we talk about the signs, you've mentioned a lot of that behind it. What kind of results have you seen in patients? Have you seen some good results from the patients you've been serving? We really have. Yes, the science significant. There's 40 clinical studies. As far as results, it is a breath of fresh air. Patients tell us time and time again to get rid of the pill, turn back the clock in the bedroom, get rid of the ED. It ultimately is all about improving the relationship. And that is what we do here at Silver Leaf Medical. Now, for me, being a young man, I know a lot of young men, we don't really think about ED often. And even some older men don't think about ED often. What would you say for those people to give them a good push to get educated about ED and what we can do to make sure that we're not affected by it? Well, I think living a healthy lifestyle, I certainly think this is connected to diet and maybe the way that we age, the way that we live. Uh, if you are struggling, though, and you're maybe feeling like you're too young, you're probably more normal than you think. We see this time and time again where guys are kind of embarrassed and there's a stigma, but live as healthy and eat as healthy as you can. Some great information, and I also hear that you have a special offer for our viewers, right? So we certainly do. Get rid of the ED. Call us today. The number will be on the screen. The assessment exam and blood flow ultrasound will be free plus a little special gift that produces immediate results in the bedroom. This is normally hundreds of dollars. If you call us right now during this segment, it is all totally free. Andrew Reinhart with the Silver Leaf Medical Clinic, thank you again for joining us and giving us all that education about ED. We really appreciate it. And as a reminder, Silver Leaf Medical Clinic does have a special offer for Houston Life viewers. Call today and get that exam blood flow ultrasound plus a special gift all for free. It's a $500 value at no cost. Their phone number is 713-843-7000. You can also visit them online at silverleafmedicalclinic.com. All right, switching gears now, let's send things on over to Courtney Zavala for a sweet story of success. Uh, look at this, y'all. Coming up from chocolate-covered Twinkies to birthday birthday cake fudge. You won't believe the crazy confections this Cypress chocolate shop has in store for us for National Fudge Day. We're going to take a look at that. Plus, we're going to get a check of what's coming up for the news at four. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Courtney and Derek. We're back with you today at just about 3.30, National Fudge Day. I'm getting distracted because that chocolate that we have in studio looks amazing. It looks good. It smells really good as well. Well, we'll, we'll get to that in just a bit. But uh, for now, we want to get to some of your comments. Earlier in the show, we asked, what is one thing you wish a robot could take care of for you? The responses have come rolling in. Sandra writes in, yard work, mow, trim, rake up everything that's not grass, pull weeds. It is hot outside. That's a good one. I'm with you. I will jump in on that as well. Melissa writes in, making my favorite cocktails and bringing them to me. Man, it's hard work, but worth it. That's what I have Brandon for. He's really <laughs> good at shaking up a cocktail. Uh, Andrea writes in, the three C's, cooking, cleaning, and children. <laughs> That's a good one. Lori writes in, my bills. I mean, really, pay my bills, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, kids. The robots will pick you up from school today. It's going to be fine. <laughs> and also, you can join the conversation on our Facebook page as well. There's some pretty funny ones on there. You guys are all so funny and very witty as well. All right, let's check in with Lauren, Christine, and Justin for a look at what they have coming up at the top of the hour. Guys, any ideas for a robot? Um, I think having the option of having a robot pick up your kids from school would be nice. Yeah. Self-driving oh, yeah. cars. I'm okay with it. Yeah. 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 I feel like maybe uh, watering my plants, which is an easy task, but I always miss... By a day I put or two. Too, I know. I put, like, too much water or not enough or water. Or you could just and... be like me and not have any. No, but I like to have them. Go. Derek knows I like to have them. And, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I always overwater them. Maybe a robot would be better at it. <laughs> Maybe so. Overwatering is a common issue. Justin, what about you? What would you have done? Uh, I would create a weather clone <laughs> so that they could stand right here, look like me, talk sleep. to you. Careful now. Uh -oh, careful. Be careful what you ask We'll for. all be out of a job soon. Oh, and then I could be sipping on that cocktail that that robot would make me as well, which you're talking about. So huh. that's what I would be do. Nice. We got it all figured out. Yep, I certainly would. 
And then they could like take care of all the nasty emails that we get sometimes too. When <laughs> People well, complaining about the emails. weather, the, the hot and humid weather we're having yeah. right now. A little bit, a little yeah. bit, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit at times. So yeah, it, you know, it, it's it's funny because it's it's we may not hit 98 today, but we hit it four days in a row, mm -hmm. right? The it, intercontinental 98. Last time we did that was 2011. You remember that, Lauren? Right, remember yeah. it was 100 degrees, like a thousand years in court, you remember that too? I do. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. so I, we're not hitting that, but it's still hot out there, be ready for it, for sure. And this is a live look into downtown. What's interesting is, is when the storms came through last night, they actually brought in some slightly drier air, and you go, come on, Jay. But I promise, it really did. We're at 95 today, Sugarland as well, 91 down towards Galveston, and a bit of an east wind. So you had that little drier east wind coming in. We've got a couple of pops down there, moving in towards Matagorda County. We've got one here trying to flare up just to the north of the Bolivar towards Eagle Point, and that's about it. Other than that, I don't think we'll see much coverage today. Certainly not like yesterday or last night. The atmosphere was just so juiced and so charged up. As soon as those storms got going, things were just popping, and we went from there. So it is still warm out there. We've got mid-90s. Feels like temperatures are about 100 to 100 and 304, so keep that in mind. Yeah, it's warm, and we're going to keep just a 20% mention, and I think these should uh, finish up by about 7 o'clock or so, and then as we get into the overnight hours, clear skies again. Should be a fairly decent start. So if you're going to get a run in either late night tonight, certainly tomorrow, or if you're going to get some barbecue in going, just wait till the sun goes down and it'll certainly be better. All right, let's talk about what's happening in the Gulf. Two things to note here. One, the center is way down here in the Bay of Campeche, right? But look where all the convection is right up here. So the storm is fairly displaced. It's running into a lot of dry air and there's a lot of wind shear across there as well. But that said, there's still a 90% chance that we're likely going to be looking at some kind of a tropical development. This likely will be a tropical depression. I think that's about as high as it's going to get. So notice as we get in towards Thursday into Friday, most of that slowly starts to lift its way northward. This is the American model, by the way. So as we get to early Saturday morning, we see this. We see the storm itself pushing in towards Sabine Pass, maybe cheating just a little east of there. Obviously, that puts us on the clean side of the storm. And then you see where all of the precipitation is, way away from the center, up here into Mississippi. And that just continues as we get in towards Saturday afternoon. And then by Sunday, that's gone. We may have to watch for a quick shower to try to sneak in on one of these little uh, leftover boundaries that's just behind the storm itself. But I think for the most part, we're going to dodge a bullet here with this, which is certainly good news. So here's what we know for sure. We'll likely see this development within 48 hours. The track on that right now is still favoring in towards Louisiana, western Louisiana, and the timing Friday night and Saturday morning. For us, I think the biggest impact that we'll see, guys, will likely be some elevated tides, and the waves will probably start crashing by Friday night into Saturday, upwards of around six, seven feet. So of course, rip current's going to be high as well, and that'll be that way all day Saturday. So even if you say, oh, well, the storm's moving away from us, we'll be okay. Just be careful if you are headed out to the beach this weekend. All right, Justin, we appreciate that update. Thank you. And here's a look at some of the other stories we're, we're covering today at 4 o'clock. Right now, a search is underway for a man who's been missing for more than two days. 41-year-old Ruben Sanchez was last seen at his home in the city of South Houston earlier this week. Coming up at 4, what searchers found at his home as they were looking for him. We've been telling you all week about ERCOT's request to conserve electricity because of high demand and so many power generators being offline. KPRC 2 investigator Robert Arnold is in Austin today looking for answers as to why ERCOT has had to issue the request and what's being done to make sure your power stays on. Plus, a Texas couple seeing a need to help less fortunate students in our schools. What they're doing to make sure that young boys and girls have at least one good pair of shoes to put on their feet. So a lot coming up today at 4 o'clock, you guys. Okay, yeah, very right nice. There. And we are all keeping our fingers crossed that power stays on. Yes, we are indeed. indeed. All right, see you at 4 o'clock. So after 14 years of being a trial attorney, Scott Kasuji decided to trade in law for chocolate, following in the footsteps of his father and mother. This is such a sweet story. Today, Scott runs Copper Kettle Chocolate Factory in Cyprus with his wife, Carrie, and their son, Ryan, has joined the sweet family business as well. I'm Scott Kasuji, and I own Ch Copper Kettle Chocolate Factory. Uh, I was a litigation attorney for 14 years, and when Carrie and I started talking about the, the prospect of opening a business, it was really a tough decision because I really do love the practice of law, but we, we did see this as an opportunity to start a business that we knew that we loved because we had the opportunity to see our parents or my parents uh, in this business. This is my mom and dad back in 1988 when they opened their business in Lebanon, Ohio. Um, they're standing in front of the candy cases that you now see here. 
in our shop in Cyprus. When we started Copper Kettle, 100% of the recipes were from my dad. He developed those recipes over the you know, 30 years that he was working with chocolate and then opening his business. After a short period of time, we began developing our own recipes. Uh, but that's one of the fun things that we do. We, we try not to get stuck in you know, 37 pieces of chocolate that we do, and that's all that we do. You know, we're always looking for new ideas and, and trying to bring them uh, into the shop. We've got the double dipped Twinkies uh, in milk chocolate. We weren't too sure about those when we first started, but uh, those are one of the most popular things that, that we do. One of the things that was really important to me when we opened the shop was um, to, to have a, a, a window to the back where we're making the chocolate because we want people to know that what they're seeing out here is made fresh every day. Uh, in the back. One of the most exciting things right now is that we've got the third generation of our family making chocolates in the back. Ryan came in uh, in 2015, shortly after we opened the business, and began learning to make chocolates. And now he uh, makes the vast majority of the chocolates that we have here, and he just does an amazing job. That is probably the best part about it, is being able to, to work with your family, to see your son kind of taking over the, the chocolate making. Uh, Carrie is absolutely amazing with the customers. Uh, everybody seems to have their, their role here, and it is very, very satisfying. Chocolatiers as a whole are probably innovators. They, they want to develop new products. I think that is important to us, and, and I think that what we really want customers to take away is that there's really nothing that uh, they can't find here. Uh, if they love chocolate, they'll find it here. What a cool, cool story. It is incredible, and uh, I, I gotta tell you, this is so delicious, I can't even describe. I just had something, you know a haystack where it's like yeah. coconut and chocolate? I just had a similar thing, but it, instead of coconut, it was toffee oh. all put together. So, so here's, yeah, and right here you're looking at the yeah, chocolate the, assortment box. Absolutely lovely. Uh, you could see the spots where we got it. I mean, this is one of those <laughs> days I'm jealous of our jobs. Right? It's a pretty good day at work. <laughs> yeah. This is the fudge box here. Um, but I think what makes it even better is hearing the story about Scott and his wife, Carrie, and the son, Ryan, everybody kind of working together with that family recipe is really incredible. I think it's also so nice when people carry on the, the family tradition. Yeah. His grandparents would be so proud to see that they have taken this tradition and created something that is so fantastic. I cannot wait to go visit them. So thanks for uh, thanks for lunch, Scott. Appreciate it. And cheers to National Fudge Day. Mm -hmm. It's a good day at work, right? Oh, yeah. If you're still Yum. looking to get something for Father's Day, besides this, we do have some sweet gifts for Dad, too. You can head to the food and drink section of our website for more information. This box is going to be gone in about five minutes. <laughs> All right, coming up, June is Pride Month, so why not show your support for equality with some delicious sips? We are tasting craft wine and beer that give back right after this. It is that time. Happy hour in Studio B. And in today's wine club, poured by HEB, we are finally doing a live tasting, Courtney. Can you believe it? I cannot. In honor of Pride Month, we are featuring a wine and craft beer label that give back to the LGBTQ plus community. And here to walk us through the tasting is HEB wine specialist Nicholas Perkins. And normally we see you over Zoom and you're in studio with us today. It's so great to see you. That's right. It's so exciting to be here and so nice to finally meet you guys in person. Well, I know. And for people who are asking, to. Yes, it is Nicholas from the commercials that we did for HEV. So <laughs> it's great to see you again and fun to do a live tasting. I love that you brought bubbles. You know Courtney and me so well. This bottle uh, has dressed up for the month of June. It is. So this bottle, it's a Spanish cava from True Colors. And what's really great about this particular wine is that it's a wine with a purpose. 
50 cents of every bottle sold goes to support GLAD, which is the Gay and Lesbian um, Alliance Against, Alliance against defamation. defamation. Thank you for the help on that. Yeah, <laughs> of course. But it's delicious and, and it's beautiful and it's the certainly the wine that I want to take to all my pride brunches. Here's the thing, I'm singing Cindy Lauper. I've got that song stuck in my head. <laughs> but this bottle is absolutely beautiful and sometimes I'm a victim of this where I grab the bottle just because it looks really pretty, <sighs> but this tastes so it good. Does. It tastes just as good as it looks. It is, it's a st sustainably farmed and you just get that, that light, crisp freshness. And so it's the perfect summer drink drink and perfect for, you know, a brunch or a party. And this is going to pair well with it, really anything, right? It is. Bubbles are so forgiving with, with pairing. My favorite pairing is with fried chicken, uh, but you can that. have it with just about anything. Oh, I love a good fried chicken. Also, I mean, sustainable farming mm -hmm. is such a thing, and this label, they are committed to that as well. The way these grapes are grown, they take great care to do so, right? That is absolutely right. So you can feel good about the cause that you're supporting, but also the quality um, and, and how what you're drinking is made. And What's really great too is the cost of this bottle. It is, it's around $16, which is an absolute steal. Um, so you can buy multiple bottles for all your friends and family and everyone that you're celebrating with. Absolutely, you do that HB, you get the little thing, you can carry it out in the pack. I and like people it. will definitely notice you when you walk through the door <laughs> at someone's, you know, a friend's house for brunch, bringing that bottle in. Okay, so the Kava is fantastic. We love it. We love the cause it supports. Let's move on to something from Eureka Heights. I love this brewery. I think it's totally underrated. I proudly have my Eureka Heights pride shirt with me. That is uh, so cute. Today, it it's matches so cute. The beer. Thanks for, for sending this to me. And the beer, Lavender Bunny, silly me, I didn't realize it is actually lavender colored. It is, it sure is. So they've started with the base of their Buckle Bunny, which is their award-winning cream ale. Um, they've added lavender and butterfly pea flower. And butterfly pea flower is a plant from Southeast Asia that imparts that beautiful color. You're it, kidding. It is so good. And I have to tell you, normally beer for me has a very strong aftertaste. This doesn't, and that's where I get the lavender. I don't really smell the lavender, but that's where I get the taste is at, at the finish. That's true, it's so pleasant. It is, it. it is almost just like a hint of it right there. Okay, and something about uh, this purchase, Eureka Heights, they are making their own donations uh, to support the Montrose Center, is that right? That is absolutely correct. So $2 from every four pack sold at HEB um, will go to support the Montrose Center. They also have uh, bars and restaurants partic participating here locally, and $1 from every pint sold will go to support the Montrose Center as well. I love that, that it's a you know, local company. We love Eureka Heights but it's also benefiting other organizations in our backyard. Well, and also if you're not familiar with the Montrose Center, so they, they are committed to helping underserved communities. So communities of color, LGBT community, women, of course, uh, and they do such fantastic work for people who, who really need just, you know, a little leg up. So it's great that Eureka Heights is donating. You guys also at HEB, you have your own uh, initiative. So can you walk us through that? We do. So we have the Be the Change initiative, and that is um, a program that we have to hire highlight underserved communities, or excuse me, underrepresented communities like women, people of color, um, and also LGBT plus uh, uh, individuals out there. Um, and what's really cool, and I'm proud to announce, and if Derek would like to grab our nice surprise, is that we are going to be donating $5,000 uh, in the name of Be The Change uh, on behalf of HEB. Yay! We've got Look the giant that. check. I love it. That is so awesome and well needed too. Very, very Center. nice. Here, I'm going to put this up front too. This is a very large check. Can you imagine walking into a bank with this? Well, <laughs> Nicholas, uh, please, please send our thanks to your entire HEB family because HEB has been part of our community for such a long time. And we know that Scott and everyone on down from Scott McClelland uh, to you guys, you are committed to helping our community. So this is fantastic. And we are so proud that uh, you would choose our show to help announce it. I know, and we all get to be the change because when we purchase these at HEB, we are making a difference in all these communities. It's great to see you, Nicholas. No, it's so nice to see you guys as well. And in person. Yes, Ooh, <laughs> finally. so good, I know. <laughs> by the way, guys, if you want to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, it's super easy. All you need to do is visit our website to register. You're going to have access to exclusive giveaways. We even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings as well. Very, very nice. As a reminder, you can find today's featured wine and beers at your local HEB. Nicholas Perkins, it's great to see you.
Thank you so much. And Cheers. thanks again to HEB. Cheers. I know. Let's let's now check in with Lauren and Joe, who have been hard at work today putting their design skills to the test. Can't wait to see your rooms, guys. How's it going? Okay, so maybe on a normal day, I'd need a little bit more time, but let me tell you something. This has been so much fun here at Exclusive Furniture. Joe and I are putting together our rooms a little bitty sneak peek right here and right here. Joe's actually lifting things. The final product when Houston Life returns in just a few minutes. Don't move. Exclusive Furniture has had some great deals happening, but this weekend is really when you need to get in the store. Check out this beautiful showroom. Father's Day weekend, it's all weekend long, and we've been really working hard. Myself and Joe Sam here at the Cypress location of Exclusive Furniture to put together our empty space and design it. And um, <laughs> uh, Sam Zavary is the CEO and president here at Exclusive Furniture. If you were to take a little peek at uh -huh. our two rooms here, what do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, Joseph's is almost right there. Yours is work in progress. <laughs> still. And I, I know it's just a little delays. I mean, you know, getting some stuff uh, hanging. Like, you know, we got some wall art coming for you and some tables coming. Okay, I think Joe's been hired here at the store. Tell us about what you put in your room. The thing is, is that what I was doing is and why mine's finishes, uh, almost finished, is because I did a lot of the hard work. <laughs> but you don't have to do that when you come here to exclusive furniture because they do all of that for you free delivery and setup. So we put a modern touch on mine. We have a good good summer vibe. We have those light colors. We got the white couch to make sure you're nice and fresh. And look at my little man in the corner. That's Joe just relaxing and chilling. <laughs> he's having a good time because he's home having a good time. Lauren, you went with the more traditional vibe, right? Can we just get Joe to stand right here? Did you plan to match your room, Joe? All the colors are perfectly coordinated. Oh, that's nice. We did have some tips from designers inside the store. Sam, let's come take a look at mine over here, which is the pieces are still there. They're just yes. not on the wall yet, this right? Not on there yet. And I mean, you know, the coffee tables are coming. <laughs> I think that's part of the end table that just arrived. <laughs> So, so it's coming. I mean, look, if you have another 20 minutes, I think <laughs> yours will look real nice. Do you think that you'd keep mine in the storefront for customers to see or Joe's? Uh, well, don't, don't answer that, Sam. Well, don't answer that. <laughs> answer it. The cool thing is that we've gotten a lot of help from some of the professionals here. They gave us some really cool tips. They gave us those five things that makes a living room look good. We needed the couch. We needed the rug. We needed lamps and coffee table. And then you can throw in your own creative touch with the paintings and the fixtures that go along with it. So you really can have fun when you come here to check out how you can design your own room. And you have an on, on staff yeah. professionals that can give you some advice to do so. Absolutely. And I mean, it goes with our training we train everybody how to build a room I mean you know uh, your, your living room is just not ready if you put a sofa love seat in there you got to have coffee tables you got to have the lamps got to have the rugs you got to have the pictures you got to have the little tabletop accessories and we sell everything over here exclusive furniture everything under one roof and like y'all have probably heard before 98% of our furniture is mm -hmm. in stock there's mm -hmm. a big furniture shortage but we have it in stock and we'll be guaranteed we'll have it delivered the same week really quickly what's the website that people can go to to check out all of the great deals that you have both online and in store for this coming weekend so exclusivefurniture.com and we have 25% off this weekend everything in the store plus free delivery and setup okay you see we have it all going here and you already know who's the winner we're not gonna have to say it but I mean look what? it just comes with the creativity we had to throw it in, but Lauren, great effort. Oh, e, e for effort, Joe, right? Right, Courtney and Derek? Is that E for effort over here? Yeah, I, th I mean. Together eventually. It, it, you did great. She's just a little slow to the party. That's it. I mean, you know. But I mean, look, look at, I mean. Let's when, take when one more look at room. my room. I mean, oh. <laughs> Rubbing it in now. Yeah, it does look pretty good. I love that rug there. Mm -hmm. there okay, we'll go see him because that's where <laughs> low prices live. <laughs> Love seeing Sam. All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks. After the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show as we commemorate Juneteenth. And as we head to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Courtney and Derek, you will want to tune in tonight for our ET exclusive, My Sit Down, with Naya Rivera's father, George, nearly one year after her death. He tells us about her final moments and how her son Josie is doing today. And also, wait until you hear the emotional letter that he wrote to his daughter. That is all tonight. 6 30 right here on kprc2 but don't go anywhere houston life we'll be right back
Tomorrow on Houston Life, we're commemorating Juneteenth when KPRC2 broadcasts live from Emancipation Park. We are so looking forward to this. Join us as we explore the park, learn about its historic relevance, and hear from community members who are making a difference. And we were just out there recently for their volunteer day that they had. It's a gem in the city. The park is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I, I lived wait. a block away yeah. from Emancipation Park for three years, and we love that community so much. And that revitalization that's happened there, it's so incredible. Incredible. They want us to pick up trash. There was nothing there. I mean, the community loves it and embraces it. It's a beautiful spot in our city. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. It's hard to believe. I think it's been about four years yeah. since they underwent a $34 million renovation. And in case you don't know the history, it's technically the oldest park in the city of Houston, originally purchased by a group of freed slaves. Four of them, right? Four, yeah, I believe so. For $800 yeah. at the time. And so really incredible from story. then until now, I mean, that it's been such a gathering place for that community and mm -hmm. it's so great the way they have just made those facilities uh, so robust. Absolutely. We're taking the show on the road tomorrow. Cheers to Wine Club Wednesday and National Fudge Day. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. We're going to toss it on over to Lauren and Christine in Studio A. Hi, ladies.